Have you guys seen this? Have you guys seen this? Um, I went to play his old interview of uh, Brendan interview with, um, what do you call it? With, uh, what's her name? Kristen Leahy. Do you remember Kristen Leahy? The woman that um, Big Baller brand guy told her to stay in her lane and that caused a whole kerfuffle. And then everybody eventually found out that she's actually shit at her job and she eventually got fired. But that was a whole kerfuffle and she tried to get fucking um, Big Baller brand dad cancelled, right? Because he told her to stay in her lane because she kept interrupting. That was fucking hilarious. But anyway, um, she did an interview with Brendan Shaw back in the day, like four years ago, right? And it's funny because Brendan looks so different. He looks so alive. He's, his face looks so light. He looks so happy. Um, this is also like a big kind of gig for him, right? It's kind of a mainstream like sort of look for him. So it's pretty wild to see how like far his star has fallen because this was kind of normal for him in terms of a press run. Let's play the clip. This is pretty wild, this clip. Right? I'll show you now. Look how smug, look how happy he is. Look how happy that guy is. When's the last time he's, don't get me wrong, he's sitting next to, a, he's sitting opposite a blonde, a blonde attractive woman. But look how happy the guy is. Look how smug and happy he is. Not even smug, he's actually legitimately happy. This is a big look. A lot of big basketballers have sat in that chair, have gassed themselves up, talking to that, you know, Christy Leahy woman. Actually, you guys um, in America, can I give you guys a, a real big credit? I want to give you guys credit. Your sports broadcasters and networks are fucking genius. This whole thing that they do where they have a really attractive woman speaking to a really, you know, like a high level athlete, a professional in basketball, baseball, whatever, right, is genius because your athletes have a tendency to gas themselves up when they're talking to women. They just just say the most wildest shit. And they always bring their guard down because they're kind of a flirting. They also want to appear like a badass. So you guys have got the game locked in. In England, we don't do that. In England, we have like fucking beasts of women interviewing guys on sports thing. They don't like to play the whole like hot woman interviewing an athlete thing. They don't like it because it's a bit, you know, they think it's a bit crass. They think it maybe isn't progressive and shit. But you guys in America, you know what to do. It's fucking, it's a smart idea because you get some wild clips and the guys say some insane things they would never say to a man because they're trying to impress the woman. It's really fucking smart. Honestly, it's such a genius move to get like a hot woman and to get an athlete and have them talk about sports. They're always going to gas themselves up. Always. It's fucking genius, man. And, and then, yeah, in this conversation, you hear Brendan sound pretty intelligent, to be fair. He comes across pretty well. I'm not going to lie. Um, so, yeah, she's out here with her heels on. Yeah giving him the eyes and stuff, sitting right across him. It's pretty interesting. Let's play. I'm Christine Leahy. My guest today is a former MMA fighter and the co-host of the popular podcast, The Fighter and the Kid. He's also a stand-up comedian whose first comedy special debuts on Showtime on May 17th, Brandon Schaub. It is so good to see you. Yes, good to see you. First of all... <laughs> Did he kind of look at her? Did he look at her like, I will truck walk you in a fucking second, girl. On May 17th, Brandon Schaub. It is so good to see you. Yes. <laughs> I would truck walk you in a fucking second, girl. Addies and baddies. Addies and baddies. Row. <laughs> Row. <laughs> look at Brendan. The hungry eyes. He gave her that look like, he's like, I cannot wait to see what's underneath that dress, right? She's wearing a fucking essentially a hijab, right? In terms of a white woman. She's basically wearing a hijab. That dress is fucking long as fuck. It goes all the way to her ankles. And Brendan still gives her the look up and down. She's got nothing showing apart from her arms, right? But Brendan still is like imagining, I would fucking bend you over my truck, girl, anymore. Look at that face. Look at that face. Look at that. <laughs> they said I could never make it. They said I would never be here. I proved them wrong, right? My doubters said I couldn't be here. <laughs> look at me now. <laughs> oh, look at these eyes, hungry eyes. Look at your game. I'm Christine Leahy. My guest today is a former MMA fighter and the co-host of the popular podcast, The Fighter and the Kid. He's also a stand-up comedian whose first comedy special debuts on Showtime on May 17th. Brandon Schaub, it is so good to see you. Yes, good to see you. First of all, <laughs> here's where you win Game of Thrones, one of my favorite shows. Yours too, right? Favorite show of all time. Spoil oh, I hate that he did this because remember when Brendan was like anti Game of Thrones? He used to always dunk on it. And then he starts it super late. And then he obviously has to have the most redacted take ever. He's like, oh, season eight was the best season. It was a perfect ending. He hated Game of Thrones, said it was dumb to be into dragons, which is fine. Have your opinion. 
but then you finally end up watching it and then you say the worst season is the best season. Spoilers. What's your take on spoilers for Game of Thrones? It's such a worldwide, like global event. Uh -huh. I have to talk about it. Exactly. So when people are like, what are you doing tweeting about our postman? I'm like, everyone's watching. Right. There's hundreds of millions of people watching. Yeah, that's like, I your should... problem Give... yeah. if you haven't watched it yet. Yeah, you're not, you're absolutely... What do you think about people that do that, by the way? What do you think about people who don't have an ability to just not spoil things for like a day? What do you think that's about? I think it's a bit of like main character syndrome. You kind of want to be the person because you know everyone's going to shout at you. You know everyone's going to scream and shit. So you want to have that kind of engagement, have people kind of pay attention to you because it's such an odd thing to do. Like, it's like, it's just one day. You just have to not spoil stuff. And then you got like, no one's telling you to not spoil it for a week. That's a bit excessive. But if Game of Thrones comes on on Monday, it doesn't like, especially for these comedians, I feel like it's a bit disrespectful for your fans because most of us fans, we have fucking regular lives. We work regular jobs. We have families and shit. Maybe we can't watch the Game of Thrones things on a day. Like, usually when I had series I needed to watch, I'd usually just always download them. I'd torrent them, right? Or pirate them, whatever. Have them downloaded and have them ready to go when I had a, when I had a bit of free time to watch back to back to back to back. But... I had to purposely avoid listening to podcasts, list going on social media because people just love to spoil shit, which is super fucking annoying. And Brennan's the main culprit. He loves a good spoil. It's so annoying. Um, but yeah. Exactly, 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 Uche. Exactly, Uche. Trying to be a stand-up comedian actually ruined this man's life and career. He was... I've always said this. I think Brennan is perfectly fine doing what he's doing now. Like, being like... I don't know what, what, what you got a lot of them. You got a lot of them here in the UK too. Like average athletes or average professional athletes who then segue into being sports commentators, right? And just because they were professional, people kind of give them jobs because they were professionals in those sports and they can give like a professional insight, but they didn't really achieve anything. He could have easily done that job easily because he did, he was kind of, quote unquote professional in two sports obviously only one in UFC but you can kind of say he's got some experience of playing football to a, a decent enough level he could have easily been that guy but because of the whole stand-up comedy thing because of the podcasting thing a little bit it just kind of fucked up his brain and now he's in this position where he has to try and be Louis CK on the stage when he has no business doing that you know like stand-up is probably the his worst thing that he does maybe second to like fight breakdowns you know he should have just done this whatever this thing is just been a celebrity hung out did espn stuff gone on barstool that's also another reason too um look at look at the look at the look at the ratio i gave it a thumbs up but look at the fucking ratio 2.7k upvotes to 2.2 down votes like crazy by the way what did, do you guys know anything about um why brendan has never got embraced by barstool sports i know him and Dave Pointer had a bit of a weird thing when he was meant to be on a podcast or something. But Brendan seems like somebody that would work on fucking Barstool, innit? Big up Austin Casey, I appreciate you. Okay, wait. Do you know if Rogan said he didn't like Game of Thrones? Is that why Bopper didn't like it at first? Nah, big up you, Austin Casey. I appreciate you, brother. No, 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 you're actually wrong there. You know what's funny? But Brendan wanted to be a contrarian, which was good, right? Get get your clicks, get your engagement. But because everybody loved Game of Thrones, including um, Joe. Joe even likes fucking House of the Dragon, right? House of Dragons and shit. So he's really, he's deep. But Brenner didn't want to like Game of Thrones because everyone was talking about it and because it was popular. So he kind of wanted to just like be the contrarian and say that he doesn't like it, which is a fair position to be in. Like I said, get your little clicks. But then he tried to change his mind and agree. And then when he decided to agree, he didn't like the worst season. That's the worst part about the guy not a big enough fan if you're not watching do you know what's crazy though is it really is i feel like the last show that you have to watch Correct. live all right i could talk about game of thrones Me too. for like an hour <laughs> but it. we do need to talk about you a little all bit right. yeah so before you were involved with mma you actually played football right so you played for the bills <laughs> practice squad <laughs> i don't know why I'm, i think i'm projecting i feel i'm projecting a little bit maybe but is it me or does Brendan keep... He's got the looks of somebody that's like trying to tell himself not to get a boner. Like, don't get hard, don't get hard, don't get hard. Don't imagine I'm wet. Don't imagine I'm naked. Don't imagine you sucking her tits. Don't imagine finger blasting her. Don't imagine banging her. Like, he's don't imagine it. Don't imagine it. Don't imagine I'm sucking her dick. Don't. Like, he's like trying to tell himself to like calm down. <laughs> 
<laughs> I don't know. Maybe I'm projecting. Maybe I'm projecting, but he's like, he's trying to tell himself to just like, relax. Don't get hard. Don't get hard. Are oh, your jeans too tight? Can you see your dick? No, your hand's covering your dick. Your hand's covering your dick. Don't worry. Don't worry. Look at her eyes. Look over her shoulder. Just stare through her face. Stare through her face. Imagine her naked. Actually, don't imagine her naked. Fuck, that's going to turn you on. Just stare over her shoulder. Look at the picture at the back. Look at the picture. Look at the light. Look at the fucking cameraman. He's trying to just... <laughs> this is Stinger Goo. Come on, look at him. How can you even ask this Stinger Goo? How can you even ask that question? Is this before the Addies? Of course it's before the Addies. Look at his face. Look how small his face looks compared to how he is now. Look how small he looks, his face. He looks fresh-faced. I know he's got makeup on as well, probably, but this, 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 look how he looks. He, he actually looks handsome here. This is definitely way before the Addies. 100% before the Addies, before the whiskey to the face. This is 100% before it. Mm -hmm. Arena football. Mm -hmm. At what point did you decide that football was going to go to the side and you're going to do MMA? I think football decided that. When I got to <laughs> <laughs> when, I, when I got to Buffalo, they were like, we're all set on slow white guys. Thank you for your time. Oh, I was like, no. No doubt. Okay. So, you know, it's when you're a child, you know, the NFL is like, that's Willy really Wonka's chocolate factory. Then you get there and, you know, there's a common theme with with everything I've done in my life. Like you get Then you get there and there's loads of black guys who are really, you know, who are 10 times better than you. Then you, do, then you start hating black people <laughs> and you segue into stand-up comedy. <laughs> get there and you think it's all unicorns and rainbows and it's a business it's such a business and it breaks my heart how long did you last with the bills it's a business so he's trying to say he didn't play professional football because of the business side of football business what what a business so he got discriminated on because he's white okay Maybe. Who knows? I mean, literally in, in training camp for like a week and a half. And oh, that's good. <laughs> I've watched Hard Knocks. Some guys are out of there real fast. You yeah, lasted a week and a half. They didn't know my name. Like 47 to the left. Get out of the shot. You know, like oh. I was. What uh, position? Tight end. Yeah, that H makes sense. That makes sense that you're a tight end. So you moved back to Colorado <laughs> and you started. <laughs> was, that, was, that, was that a sneak this? He like, his face glitched. That makes sense that you're a tight end. Because you told me tight ends are wedge breakers, right? They're usually just battering rounds that run into walls. Why did his face glitch there? Was that like a sneak This It makes sense you're a tight end. I've watched Hard Knocks. Some guys are out of there real fast. You yeah. lasted a week and a half. They didn't know my name. Like 47 to the left. Get out of the shot. You know, like oh. I was... What position? Tight end. Yeah, that H makes sense. That makes sense that you're a tight end. So you moved back to Colorado <laughs> and you started... <laughs> he's... He's short circuited. He tried to process the fucking insult. She basically negged him, innit? She kind of negged him. You know what? I, I wonder. I wonder if this is this. I wonder this, right? Girls usually, women especially, I think the women in the chat can, can attest to this, they have a very sixth sense for like guys hitting on them. They kind of know, right? They can always feel it. And some girls will just like throw a little jab at you, a little dagger in your ribs, just to kind of keep you a bit, you know, just to kind of keep your horny levels down. I wonder if that Kristen Leahy girl did that without even realizing subconsciously she just throw that little jab out there just to kind of bring him down to a level so that they could have a proper interview because he was probably giving her the eyes looking up and down staring at her lips all the time so she probably felt that subconsciously was like you know what let me give you a bit of a a bit of a fucking stab into the ribs gets you know take some air out of you and then you can settle and then we can go right make you soft a little bit and then now we can go because that was so unnecessary. Like, why did she do that to him? <laughs> that makes sense. You're a tight end. You, can't, you couldn't be a quarterback. You know where you could be a fucking wide receiver. You know, of course not. You don't have the brains to do that sort of shit. You know? <laughs> uh, you don't have the IQ to do that. You can't run plays. Of course not. Of course. You just go where you're told, right? Run, to, <laughs> run into that wall. <laughs> Head first. Holy shit, man. Big up Christine Leahy. Uh, Josie's saying, what's that, Uche? Uh, probably, I mean, if you're an attractive woman, you, you get offered dick everywhere. So, exactly. So, true, 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 true. Where you want, you go, you want some dick. Exactly. Good point. Oh, fucking hell, Brendan. 
boxing. How long before you thought, okay, I'm going to start to make a career out of Yo, this? Yo, big up Stinger Goo. Appreciate you, brother. When are buying some toe holds to review for us? When are buying some toe holds? Oh, never, never, ever, ever, ever. Actually, you know what? I might actually look later on. If there's some, if there's some toe holds on fucking... Um, if there's like a if there's like a dupe of a toehold or like Etsy or like Alibaba or something, I'll buy them, you know? Maybe maybe there's somebody out there in China making dupes of fucking toeholds, right? Making fake elephant print <laughs> toeholds. Uh, oh my god, yeah, Koila. Toeholds cost more than Skankfest. Bamba ratted. Mm, especially, you know, leaving fighting going I'm sorry, leaving football going to fighting. I don't think anyone, especially at that age, 22, 23, turns to fighting because they have a lot of options. You know, I wasn't, I got- I, I don't like this. I don't like that in bar. He, he used to say that a lot back in the day. It's kind of offensive to be fair. Fighting is an option. Some people like to fight. Martial arts is a, is a sport as well. It might not be the sport that he always wanted to do, but it's also a sport. Um, combat sports is a sport people compete at that professionally it's in the fucking olympics for goodness sake i don't like the fact that he i don't like the fact that he did he says that sort of stuff i find it super insulting to the guys and girls out there who commit their lives to fighting it's super dumb but he says that only because it's a cope i feel like to cope to say why he ended up there because obviously it wasn't his first option right he wanted to become a football player but now he'll tell you his north star was fucking being george carlton and shit but yeah i find that line super insulting Done with football. I was very brokenhearted. My partner in crime, Joe Klaffenstein, was playing for the Rams. He was a stud. So I, I was around that atmosphere and I was training. I, I need to find something to do. And I was selling supplements door to door, like mm. Pursuit of Happiness. And um, I don't know. I just, I just kind of fell into it. Okay. I fell into Of course your life was a movie. Of course. Of course. It just can't be simple. Like, hey, it didn't work out. I really wish it would have, but I'm thankful that I was able to have a second chance at, you know, some level of professional sports. I was in a quote-unquote locker room still, blah, blah, blah. Pursuit of happiness. Really, Brendan? Really? The lies are just, like, incredible, bro. To it, and I, I got lucky. And again, a common theme it, with all the, these phases of my life that I've been through, you find that, and it's just luck or fate, whatever you want to chalk it up to, is I always had a great mentor. Every every door I've stepped into, I've had these great mentors who take me under their wing. So hmm. when I started- Mentor? Or do you mean you have this fucking silver spoon? Or do you mean you had the cosines of all- co Like, it just, it, just imagine, imagine for a second, right? Imagine every small content creator out there that you like. Now imagine if they all knew Joe Rogan, how different their lives would be. Because Rogan, love it or not, love him or not, he is a kingmaker. He's a king and queen maker. Imagine every single person Rogan could have touched, right? Yes, homo. And made king and queens. That's how easy it was for him. Like, it didn't take much. Just being next to Rogan can give you a career. So mentor is like, it's a bit of an understatement. You know what I mean? Joe Rogan and Brian Callen legitimately handed this guy a career on a plate. And he still managed to find a way to fuck it up. That's a crazy thing, you know? He still managed to find a way to fuck it up. Yeah, exactly, Austin Casey. Imagine if uh, Mr. Beast knew Joe Rogan. <laughs> How big would he be, right? Little old Mr. Beast. <laughs> Five subscribers. Imagine how big he'd be. Imagine what he could do with the money, man. Imagine how many people he could have helped if he knew Rogan. Fighting, I, first day that I walked in. By the way, um, you can tell by her face she doesn't give a single fuck about what he's saying. Yeah, for sure. 100%. He's he's trying too hard to impress her, is what it is. But by the way, um, have you guys seen all that stuff online with um, Mr. Beast and Casey Neistat kind of all getting offended that Netflix are making a real life um, Squid Game thing? These content creators have like a weird sense of like self-importance and ego in it. It's Netflix. It's Netflix show. They're now making a real game show out of it. And those guys are kind of getting offended and almost saying like Netflix copied Mr. Beast because he made a real life version of the show first when he copied the sh Yeah, I mean, I don't, why do these content creators have such a, a, a sense of ownership on shit they don't own? Like, <laughs> you copied the show. <laughs> you know, like, why are you complaining? <laughs> the only guy that should complain 
is the Japanese guy who no is it the Japanese or South Korean the Korean guy who wrote Squid Game allegedly he didn't get paid that well he's the only person I should be complaining hopefully he gets some residuals from the live game show he probably won't because you know how these streaming companies are it's probably a whole different deal but see Mr Beast and Katie Neinstadt essentially complaining about a show that they copied in the gym uh, Nate Markarch gym in Aurora Colorado high altitude they go Come back tomorrow. We have a big guy who he's starting fighting too. You guys would be good training partners because no one wants to go with a big guy. Yeah. You know? So I come back the next day and it's this guy named Shane Carwin who eventually came up uh, the UFC heavyweight champion of the world. So me and him started together and he was my mentor and um, that's kind of how I started. Were you scared to get hit in the face? Terrified. I, I, and, um, terrified. Like my fighting's not my nature. You know, we don't we don't know each other that long, but I'm not a I'm not an aggressive guy. I'm not a I'm not an aggressive guy, right? I'm not an aggressive guy, he says. I'm not an aggressive guy, allegedly, right? S -s -s the biggest bitch on the team. For whatever reason, <laughs> I had to room with the kid. And me and him did not get along. We played the same position. <sighs> so he, would, he was the guy where, dude, what's mine is yours. I ate like one Triscuit. And then I come home and he put sticky notes all, all over his entire food. Literally opened the box of Nutri-Grain, put it all in. And I go, what the fuck? So what do I do? I eat all of it and I throw out the rest. And then put it all back. <laughs> Throw up. Then, then I go to practice. <laughs> That's funny. And I come back. <laughs> That's so funny. Right? And I'm and I'm, I'm I'm ready to throw down. Right? I'm like, alright, I'm just gonna fuck this dude up. I'm gonna figure it out. I my phone's ringing like nonstop. I'm like, what the fuck? I answer it. I go, hello. It's his mom. He called his mom and told his mom what I did. We're in college. We're come juniors on. and we're sophomores. Come. I'm like, that guy sucks. Listen to this. Ah, oh, these all these people suck. Wait for this, B. So I'm like, what the fuck? His mom. Remember. Brian Callum most likely has a trust fund. Brian Callum most likely was borrowing money from his parents at this point. Most likely. There's also, who told me this? No, no one told me. Was it, did I hear Red Bar say this? Red, I think Red Bar said this on his show. That the word around town is that Brent, Brian owes a bunch of people money. He's always borrowing money from people and shit. Allegedly. So maybe he's one of those type of rich kids who is ashamed to ask his parents for money. But then ask his friends and then he gets in debt with his friends. That's what I've heard. Oh, did I hear that from Red Bar? I think Red Bar said that. But yeah, just imagine. Just keep that in mind. Um, and I just go, his mom's like, talk to me, like, yell at me. And I just go, get the fuck out of here. Hang up the super disrespectful, which I never am. I go, get the fuck out of here. Hang up the phone. And so uh, at, at the time, there's only one parking spot for our place. So his mother said, Brennan, you ate all of his food? You, you got to pay it back. You need to apologize. And started tearing into me about my character. I went, fuck off, hung up the phone. Jesus which, Christ. You talk to my mom like that, I'm gonna rip your face of off. Course. Which Jesus is all Christ. I'm trying to do. I'm just trying to fight this kid. Yeah. So, you know, I'm never disrespect like that. Nah. So then there's one parking yeah, spot. Yeah, sure. And he knew the only way to get back at me was to take that parking spot. The trap parking in C Boulder is terrible. There's something about him and parking, isn't it? Who said it earlier about him in a pickup truck in a comedy store? There's something about him and parking and cars, isn't it? There's something about him tying his self-worth to being able to park easily in places and shit it kind of reminds me of like joe budden joe budden had this weird thing about smoking in places where you're not meant to smoke in his brain i think if if, if he's allowed to see he, he, he has that dave Chappelle thing where dave Chappelle just smokes anyway he doesn't give a fuck because it's dave Chappelle. and i think brent joe budden saw that as a as something to aim for i know i'm successful when i can just smoke a cigarette anywhere and maybe Brendan has a similar, similar thing with parking. He thinks he should be, you know, he should have a chaperone guiding him to his parking spot or there should always be a space reserved for him because he's a big deal. Hmm. I see him mentioning parking a lot. It's a common thread of this guy. Parking, 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 parking. Or maybe it's just an American thing. I don't know. Great guy. Never met him. So he goes, hey, man, it's in our lease. I get that parking spot uh, three days a week. You get it four, I get it three. I went, but you don't have a car. He just doesn't matter. I want that spot three days a week. It's in my lease. Otherwise, blah blah blah. Uh, all right, man. So he gets a he parks his bike there. He parks his bike in the parking spot, and I take at my time my girlfriend's car who can't park there. I parked on the other side. Well, just so happens that morning that we had uh, winter conditioning at five a.m. I go to get in my car, which is in the spot and it's broken into. All windows are bashed. The radio's taken out. All my gear, football gear's taken out. My wallet's gone. Like, oh, well, that's the final straw. I walk in and I'm. Who leaves their football gear, wallet, and everything inside of a car? Who does that? 
Is that like a white person thing? Like you just trust things. Why would you leave your wallet and your all your football gear inside of a car with you? Don't you want to wash? Like you take your car, your your gear inside to wash it. No. When I used to play football, you would take your stuff with you, and you take it in your house to wash it. Why would you leave it in the car? Like, I think he's lying. I think either he's lying or he's an absolute redact. I'm not too sure, but it seems odd. Yeah, exactly, Tetsu. Only lacrosse players. <laughs> exactly. Lacrosse players will leave in fucking gated communities. Why would you leave stuff like that? Anyway, whatever. I'm like, all right, man. Oh, really? Is it? Okay, cool. Okay, cool. It's a bit quiet. Okay, um, let me... It's just... A, it's not my fault. I think it's a video. It's the video itself is really low. Let me see if I can up it a little bit. Uh, bear me a second. Unfortunately, I think it's a video. Can I add a filter to this? I can, can't I? <clears throat> bear me a second. I think I can add a gain filter on this. Maybe I can make that louder. But it's not me. It's the video itself. It's really quiet. So let's, let's put it up to here. Five. Let's see. Fuck it. Let's blow your ears out. I just won't talk. I'll let him say it. Car got broken into because you want to be a bitch. We're going to fight right now. Whoever wins stays. Whoever loses leaves. Deal. We're just going to handle this like man. We're not going to, it's not going to leave from here. I'm going to fuck you up. And he goes, I'm not fighting you. I'll call the cops. I went, nope. I'm, I promise you, you're going to have to fight me. He goes, I'm not going to fight you. I went, that's not an option, man. I'm so mad. The car's broke. We've been through this enough. Whoever loses leaves. Did he break in? He didn't. We don't. He know. Did. We have no yeah, idea. Yeah. So I take my sweatshirt off. And I'm just in sweats and no shirt now because I don't want you know I don't want to grab my shirt. Yeah. Ready to fight UFC style. Yeah. So I've been watching UFC, right? But you hadn't fought. No, no training, point. nothing. That's great. And I go, we're gonna fight, and he goes, I'm not fighting you. So I'm like, God, what's the number one thing I can get to get? Because I want him to fight me first. Yeah. So I don't get kicked off the team. Yeah. So I go fucking Ace Ventura two style. Go. <laughs> Whew, loogie right in his face <laughs> we're face to face wow he does nothing still wow and imagine right oh sorry imagine what imagine please keep this in mind guys this beef started because that guy said don't eat my stuff you live in a house together with somebody and they don't want to share you don't mind sharing but they don't want to share it's perfectly fine it might be a douchey thing. It might be annoying. You might call the guy a fucking pussy or whatever. You might swear. But it's pretty much an okay requirement to say, please not touch my stuff. And this is what turned into all this. Because he said, don't eat my stuff. Ow. He's, I'm not, he, big dude too. I'm not fighting you. Good luck giving me to fight. So finally, I just lost my cool. I grabbed him by his sweatshirt and I grabbed him and threw him through our glass door, shattered our glass door <laughs> out the back. Then I went to practice okay. and told the entire team what happened. And you know, I'm a good storyteller. So yeah. I just roasted this dude so, so bad. We had to move out, right? But you moved out. But the next morning, uh, you know, there's all this hearsay. He called the cops on me. What a fucking bitch. bitch. What a bitch. Gary Barnett called me up in his office. I'm like, well, I was brand new to the team. Like, I'm getting kicked off for sure for this fucking scrub. This is how Baron Scott should handle this. Go to his office. Me and Gary Barnett had this great office. He has a huge chair, and you're knee to knee facing each other. You can't look anywhere. Damn. It's very intimidating. Damn. I'm like, damn, that's how I'm going to go. And he goes, sit down, Shab. He liked me because I was a hard worker, yeah. right? I was like a fucking, yeah. I was a guy, man. Yeah. I fucking did yeah. everything yeah. he asked you worked for. worked your ass I'd off. run through a wall for this of guy. Of course. He goes, sit down, Shab. Because you want to tell me what happened? Brian's getting a literal boner from hearing Brendan talk about his college days. A guy, a boy, a Chad. Because it's not Brian's existence, right? He grew up in fucking privilege, going to private schools in the Philippines and Switzerland and Belgium and fucking Israel, wherever his fucking undercover CIA dad was traveling, right? <laughs> Allegedly. That's where he'd go. So he's not had this experience at all, right? He was playing badminton. He played tennis in college, <laughs> right? He was part of the chess club right like one of his fun one of his fun activities was language exchanging right with other private school attendees at lunch <laughs> right he fucking holidayed in monaco Sancho pay corfu right bermuda <laughs> he went to zimbabwe and shit back in the day kenya to hang out so he looks at brendan like that's the life that i would have wanted to lead man a man's man life so he's literally getting like, a rock hard boner from him brendan talk about his football days like oh Oh, he's a man. He's a man. He's a man dragon. Oh, fucking knob. I went, coach, listen, I didn't want to come to this. He, and I told him, I went, he did this, this, and this. 
I didn't want it to even get into your on your desk. I wanted to fight. Loser moves out. No one's gonna get hurt. We're just gonna fight each other like grown ass men. <laughs> we're in college. We're not grown men. That's great. And then the loser leaves. Yeah. I know that's it, man. I understand. You know, it looks bad. PR. It looks like shit. I'm. I'm sorry, man. I, I didn't mean to embarrass you. I, I get it. You got to do what you got to do. He goes. We need more guys like you on this team. He goes, this is what we're gonna do. <laughs> he goes, come in and work in the weight room. Like, I had like they got Austin Casey. Service. I wouldn't be surprised if Bopper lifted the part of that story about throwing him through the window from Beverly Hills Cop. Oh. <laughs> Wow. Wow. Very good reference. You are right, Austin Casey. Good point. Imagine if he did. No way. He couldn't, could he? Could he? That's a Beverly. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that seems like amazing. That would be so cool if it happened, innit? Oh my god, if he did, oh my, oh, anyway, I don't want it to be true, but big up in case I appreciate you. He was in just have the guy sign off it, just lift more, it'd, that'd be your community service, but um, <laughs> we, we need more guys like you. See at see practice. Beautiful. See at practice. Beautiful. Boom. Yeah. And did that guy get kicked off the team or what No, happened? he was the laughing stock of the team. Yeah. Every, I told everyone, everyone was like, what? Because you, you're not part of the scribe. You know, not we, part of the Anyway, so that really defeats the whole point of him saying, oh, I'm a fucking great guy. I'm not a fucking bully, all this sort of nonsense, right? You hear that, right? He says he's not a violent guy, allegedly. He said he's not a violent guy. That's what he basically said in that clip, right? Allegedly, he's not a violent guy. Anyway, let's get back to the fucking clip of him with Christine Leahy because that was fucking incredible. Not a violent guy, allegedly. Not a violent guy. All right, let's go back again. One more moment. And he was my mentor, and um, that's kind of how I started. Were you scared to get hit in the face? Terrified. I, I, and, um, terrified. Like, my, fighting's not in my nature. You know, we don't, we don't know each other that long, but I'm not, a, I'm not an aggressive guy. I'm not a, I'm not, I don't have a huge ego. I'm, I'm not the toughest guy in the room. I've never wanted to be the toughest guy in the mm -hmm. room. Again, with fighting, it was just lack of options. I was really athletic, and it was, it was a way to, to get somewhere, to, to fight my way out of what I was going through. So... Um, I was always terrified. It's not natural to me to fight people. Mm -hmm. I would be the guy who would knock someone out or win the fight and then go in the back and like, damn, are you okay, man? Big like, up. Dude, get out. Alan is a clown. Imagine a 60-year-old thinking this is good. Exactly. Exactly, high def. He should have stepped in and said it was bad, but he didn't. He was too busy wanking himself in his head over these fucking stories that he, you know, he'd never lived because he wanted to be that guy. It's fucking embarrassing. But I think the next episode was funny too because a, get, uh, a listener sent an email in, a pretty long one, basically telling Brendan that story was fucked up and he was f angry the whole time. He wouldn't listen. I think that was, that might have been the start of the homeless cats, you know, as well. That might have been the unofficial start when Brendan when they read that letter out live on air, Brendan didn't like it in the slightest. He didn't like being questioned. He didn't like being called out. He didn't like, you know, people basically just responding negatively to that story when he said it the first time. It was fucking epic. That might have been the actual origin story of people turning, you know? That might have been it. Everyone turning and kind of against him. Out of here. Just knock me out. I'm like, I know. I didn't mean to. Like, I hated it. I hated it. So when I watch fights, it took me a while to get used to this. But like, I, I just, I look at the guy before they're going to start fighting. And it's like, okay, this guy knows. He is about to get really hurt. Mm -hmm. No matter if you win or lose, most of the time you're going to get hurt. At every some time way. you get hurt. So you walk in, like, are you scared every time? Not scared. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is going to hurt every you, time. I, th if, I think if you sat down with like a nate diaz a conor mcgregor big up cali b thank you for the super chat i appreciate you no message but thank you so much unless you got a message then write it in the stream chat and i'll read it out Cain velasquez you know so, some of these just these they were born to do yeah, that that's different and you talk to them like what no i'm not scared yeah i was put on this earth to fight other dudes you talk to me, you know, I, I was terrified. You were. Every I was time. so scared. I was so, so scared. That's not nice, all right? That's not nice. That's not nice. <laughs> what the fuck? What is his voice? I was terrified. Is that like he's talking to girls' voice? What is that voice? Then, like, what? No, I'm not scared. Yeah. I was put on this earth to fight other dudes. 
You talk to me, you know, I, I was terrified. You were. <laughs> I was terrified. Come on, Brendan, man. You can't be trying too hard for the ladies, man. Just speak normally. Speak like you usually do. That actually works more t times out of 10 than you fucking having this valley girl thing and trying to meet her where she's at and stuff. Like, just act normal, bro. You don't need to do this. It's just too, too lame. Too, too lame. Every I was time. so scared. I was so, so scared. I would, I'd sit back in the locker room and just, you know, sometimes I'd be in tears. So I just Before? had, oh yeah, I had all these just like thoughts going through my head. I was like, there has to Did you hear that pronunciation? We got an early one. Te like he said tears, like a tear. Like when you tear something, tears, right? Do you hear that? I was so, so scared. I would, I'd sit back in the locker room and just, you know, sometimes I'd be in tears. So <laughs> Tears, 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 tears. I just Before? had, oh yeah, I had all these just like thoughts going through my head. And I was like, there has to be a better way to make a living. Oh my there, gosh. This can't be Every it. time. Every time, every single time. How did you keep. Will you suck my dick then? Will you give me a hug? Can I touch a boob? <laughs> oh my God, I feel so bad for you. How bad do you feel? <laughs> How much do you want to make me? Oh my god! Oh my god! You're so mad. How bad do you want? How do I do? What make me feel? Come on. What's that? I need that Asian American accent. I'm going through withdrawals. Okay. <laughs> that? You're a douchebag. Fuck you, man. Um. What's that? Uh. What's that thing called? Um. You're a jackass, douchebag. <laughs> <laughs> doing it I would again, I, I, again i had no option so it was a way where i was good because i was athletic but eventually experience especially in fighting comes along and these really experienced fighters i was fighting they've seen the big athletic kid yeah. so it, it stopped working for me and so um I, I, I don't know it was it, i can't i watch it now and i'm like <laughs> oh my god i can't believe what the fuck is this bro does this Brendan Schaub own a hair salon or something? Where's this sassy Brendan Schaub come from? I watch this now and I'm like, oh my God. I'm like, oh my God. I can't believe I did. I played football. I was fighting in school. I always had street fights. And then I get in the UFC and there's this big dude in tidy whities Oh my God. I have to stop looking down. Look up. Don't look down. Look up. And then I have to fight him. Oh my God. It's crazy. Then we're on top of each other. We're doing jujitsu. <laughs> Girl, jujitsu. Let me tell you. <laughs> I was thinking all sorts of thoughts, right? I take his bag. I take his bag, child, right? I take his bag. I choke him. I slip one hand under the chin, another one here, and I just press his little head against my chest and oh he falls asleep he falls asleep in my arms like a baby like a little baby like he's bobby fucking lee in my hands girl i could have put him in the manger he's just there rocker by baby maybe the <laughs> who is this who is this brendan shaw who is this brendan shaw Where's all this sass come from? He gets in front of a woman. You know what it is? I think it's I think it's Christine Leahy's fault. I think Christine Leahy's early insult, right? That insult she gave him, that little neg, that little like stab in the ribs to take the air out. I honestly think that's what we got now. She negged him and now he's trying to be her gay best friend. Expert move by her, by the way. But she negged him so hard by saying, yeah, it makes sense you're a tight end. You look like a tight end. <laughs> you speak like a tight end. He couldn't, you know, he has been able to recover. And now he wants to be her gay best friend. Girl, let me tell you about the UFC. Let me tell you about the Taekwondo. My striking girl, I could knock a man clean out. And you know what I mean. <laughs> I'm a knockout. <laughs> They don't call me the hybrid for nothing, girl. I'm a top and a bottom. Uh -huh. 
<laughs> Who is this Brendan? This version of Brendan is fucking wild, bro. It, it stopped working for me. And so, um, I, I, I don't know. It was, it, I can't, I watch it now, now? and I'm like, oh <laughs> my God, I can't believe I did that. I cannot believe it's I did scary. that. It's scary. It's terrifying. How was the experience of the Ultimate Fighter? See, I love the Ultimate Fighter. You Some did. guys can. Who the fuck is this guy? Who is this? Oh my God, I love the Ultimate Fighter. I love the UFC. Dana, if you're watching this right now, Dana. I like to call him D, right? Dana White, or I like to call him DW. DW. If you're watching this right now, I'm sorry, okay? The Reebok deal, I know. I went a bit goo goo gaga, radio gaga, haha. Big up my monsters, but I apologize, okay? The Reebok deal wasn't such a bad deal. I'm already fucking over my employees with deals, so I know how it goes when you're a businessman. You gotta make decisions. So, Dana, even though we are. Uh, you know, <laughs> we're mortal enemies. I still love you. <laughs> it's like, what? Who is this guy? Hear him. What was the experience of the Ultimate Fighter? See, I love the Ultimate Fighter. You Some did. guys complain. I loved it. It was my, it was like the first big thing to happen to me. It was at the time, you got to realize at the time, I forget what year that is, but the Ultimate Fighter was the Ultimate Fighter. Mm -hmm. That was your, that was like our, uh, that was like getting invited to the, the combine to a draft. Like when you went on the Ultimate Fighter, it was the biggest season of all time. Kimbo Slice, Roy Nelson, the who's who was on that show. Rampage and Rashad were the coaches. So when I got asked to be on the show, I was so excited because I knew that of, of 16 guys, all I had to do is focus for those six weeks. I didn't care about how to talk to my family or friends. All I had to do is focus for six weeks and I'd make a life for myself. So I Don't you find it interesting too that Brendan doesn't really talk about his friends back home? They don't really exist. It's just LA people and comedians, really. Other comedians do. They have like stories about people they went to school with or college with or stuff. He doesn't have any. What do you think that is? Zero. Zero friends from back in the day are still around. Hey, big up Eric C. Appreciate you, brother. AZ's white suburban American voice is spot on. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Eric C. I could cosplay as a as a as a middle of America girl, right? As just a mom trying to hold it down, trying to support her kids and stuff, you know. <laughs> My little, my little boy, Casey, you know, <laughs> I'll be one of those mums. I'll be one of those mums, those Midwestern mums that jacks off their son, isn't it? You know, that, 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 that mum that jumped on her kid that's playing football. The kind of ones that have like a weird incestuous relationship with their kids. They're a little bit too involved, you know? I thrived in that environment. Mm. I always liked, I liked the competition. I didn't like hurting anyone, but I liked knowing that guys were breaking down in the house and I just, I just knew I'd thrive oh, in that mentally. element. Mentally, you're mentally tougher. Yeah, huh. I loved it. Do I absolutely think, loved Ultimate Fighter. I bet do you, you think did. that guys ever knew that you didn't want to hurt them? Like that you were a little, I don't want to say soft because that's the wor worst thing to be called. But you <laughs> Yo, Chris, this Christy late, I'm not sure if she's being mean or she's just a terrible interviewer. How can you say this to somebody? She's basically calling him a pussy. Did they know you were a pussy? Yo. What the fuck is she saying, bro? Huh. I loved it. Do I absolutely think, loved Ultimate Fighter. Do you think that guys ever knew that you didn't want to hurt them? Like that you're a little... <laughs> you're a little what? <laughs> Little soy boy. <laughs> Look at his face. He wants a killer. He wants a fucking killer. <laughs> Look at that face. Soy boy. <laughs> Yo, that Christine Leahy woman, man. Maybe this is why she got fired. She's not really good at her job, is she? Pretty lady, but not the best interviewer. Can we tell that? Can we say that for sure? Like, is she oh yeah it makes sense you're a tight end and now did the other fighters know that you know you're a bit soft i don't want to say soft because that's the wor worst thing to be called but you know what i'm saying you called him soft i don't want to say soft but you said soft it's like saying i don't mean to be disrespectful 
you're about to be disrespectful. Uh, I, I, I knew there was something going on because my coaches in practice, like, you got to go harder. I'm like, that. I don't want to like we're <laughs> I don't want to hit them like that uh -huh. hard. We're, we're friends like you have to go harder. So yeah. and that was always kind of a theme in my career it was just I don't know. Yeah. I didn't want to hurt people <laughs> and you can't. Oh, that's always a theme. Boo. You're trying to win her over by being nice. That's boo. She's actually a bit disgusted. You know, I think she wants it to be meaner. She's looking for a meaner dude. He's too soft. But he's trying to be nice. I didn't go hard enough. All right, cool. I'm just too nice. Yeah, all right. Yeah, like that, you know what I'm saying? That's gonna be yeah. like that's like selling cars and I want to sell. Someone like this, right? That talks about being nice. Always, as I said before about the job thing, when people say, "Oh, we're family," always be suspicious of people who try to. Um, I don't know what that, what that phrase is called, but they go out of their way to say, "Oh, I'm a great guy." You know, I'm an honest person. You know, I never lie. You know, I'm never violent. You know, that kind of person. They're usually monsters in the background, behind the scenes. They're usually the worst people. Because we've, we've all got a bit of that in us, right? We've all, got an, we've all got the ability to fucking... That's it, virtual... Is it virtual signal? Yeah, I think it's virtual signal. But I think we all have the ability to be violent. We all have the ability to lie. We all have the, the ability to be deceitful, um, to be shady, to be all these things that aren't necessarily good things. We have the capacity to do it because they're human beings. But we try and temper that stuff, right? We know it's there in us, but we try and temper it because that's what good people do. You try and keep that shit down, but you know it's in you. You don't walk around like you've got a halo around you and shit. Or you got, you know what I mean? That's not how regular people act. Only monsters are trying to, you know, not let people see that they're monsters, say those type of things, in my personal opinion. Sell cars. Like, exactly. that's what we do, man. Exactly. It's like Michael Phelps not wanting to get wet. Like, you gotta get wet. <laughs> you gotta get wet, man. So for me, it was... A what a fucking terrible analogy. An issue. So 2015, you announced that you were going to retire. Yes. And get involved with comedy. How'd that happen? Um, I know. Um... <laughs> that didn't that did that didn't look sound good, didn't it? He had to process he he liked he smiled because comedy gave him the house, the hot girl, the designer children, you know, the designer clothes. But then he remembered how he got there. That Joe Rogan dressing down still scars him. Being embarrassed on air like that, like, fuck. You know? Like, that's what he remembered at the end. He remembered how he got there. That Rogan fucking dressing down was, yeah, you'd be surprised. That, that still hurts, man. And I, I, I understand why, because I think Rogan did a bit too much, to be fair. But yeah. Did Joe Rogan convince you to do it? Joe Rogan and Brian Callen, basically. Okay. You know, um, I, I, I was fighting, but I was doing the, uh, a podcast called The Fired Kid at, Fighter and the Kid at the time. Mm -hmm. So Brian Callen, my, my co-host, yeah. actor, comedian, one of the best comedians on planet Earth, um, me and him would do a podcast together. He doesn't say that anymore, does he? That was, used, that was always his little like line he would say when he go places. Um, me and Brian Callen, firing a kid. Brian Callen's one of the best comedians on earth. He doesn't say that anymore. He now does this whole like negging thing where he's like, oh, um, when me and Brian started firing a kid. Brian had his own podcast, but he had like 12 listeners. He does that thing now. He doesn't, he doesn't gas up Brian anymore. That relationship has changed. He's like the big dog now. There is no like sucking up Brendan. And it started to gain traction. And uh, he wanted to make it all about fighting. And I went, no, no, you gotta let me talk about fashion and cars and girls and like a lifestyle show. And he's like, all right, whatever, but still let's talk about fighting. I'm like, all right, I'll cross that box, but let me do what I wanna do. He's like, all right, fine. And so the show started to get popular, especially at the time there weren't that many podcasts. Mm -hmm. And then I remember I was That's going true. to Vancouver to fight Andre Arlovsky, who's a legend in the sport, former UFC heavyweight champion. And I'm in the airport and guys were in the airport were yelling out slogans from the podcast. Oh. And I was like, yeah, that's interesting. And then I saw one guy at TSA and he goes, dude, you're not waiting. I love you. I'm like, oh, thanks, man. You gonna watch the fight this weekend? He's like, excuse me? I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm going to Vancouver. Whoa. He's like, for what? And I go, well, how do you know me? He goes, your podcast, man. He goes, I'm, I'm part of the Fighting the Kid Army. And I was like, oh my God, this is nuts. So. Oh, wow. He just started to kind of. He's got fans everywhere. Fans in TSA, fans in airports, fans at the airport check-in, fans at TSA, fans in the parking bands at starbucks just he, rec he gets recognized everywhere there's not one place he goes where he never gets recognized not one he must be the most famous person in the world take over started to take over and then um i remember i got a check for um 
for fighting, you know, for, for getting beat up. I got a, uh, my check sitting there. I got a check from doing a podcast. And it was, it was like God, or if you believe in higher being, it was just like, dude, take a, take a hint. Look, man. The podcast was Yes. Warm. What are you doing? Whoa. Look at this. So we already know that you were scared to go into the octagon mm-hmm. every day. <laughs> Yo, Christine Leahy is like, this negging is too much, man. She's already laughing before she finishes the sentence. She's not even started. She's not even finished the sentence and she's already laughing. What are you doing? Whoa. Look at this. So we already know that you were scared to go into the octagon mm-hmm. every time. Were you scared <laughs> to go into the comedy clubs? I w- um, Big up Eric C. Appreciate you, brother. I found out my coworker is a Brian Callen fan, but he knows nothing of the allegations or the homeless cats. These people live amongst us, I'm afraid. Really? That's insane, bro. So how do people like that consume Brian Callen content? You just see, so they don't see any posts on social. They just watch him on Fire and the Kid. And maybe they skip episodes. Wow. That's crazy. I, I would understand if you're a fan and you don't care. You're allowed not to care. But not knowing about the allegations at all. And not knowing anything about the fucking Fire and the Kid subreddit is wild, isn't it? I kind of would love to have that life because, exactly, um, Uche, that dude is chronically offline. Exactly. If I'm chronically online, he's the opposite of me then. He just consumes the content. He watches Callan's specials. He sees him on other podcasts. And that's it. He doesn't do anything else. Nothing further than what they give him on the feed. Wow, bro. Wow. He kept sending me T-Fat K clips and a couple clips on The Hangover. That's pretty crazy. I didn't know that existed. You could just be a fan and just like duck out. That's pretty cool though, to be fair, that they exist, those kind of fans. They just watch what you put out. They don't dig any deeper and that's it. That's probably explains why they're also around, isn't it? If you have, if you have like a hundred of them, right? You and plus you have fanatics as well. You've got a pretty good fan base. You have a hundred people who just watch what you do. They don't dig in. They don't care about the gossip or the rumors and shit. Makes sense. I shouldn't say scared. I was more scared about what my peers would think. What Rogan? What Delia? Your what? your peers or your pairs? Scared about what my peers would think. What Rogan, what Delia, what Burt Kreischer, uh, Brian Callen would think. Uh, I was more trying to impress them. The, the, the fans with people there to see comedy, I get that. I'll get around to them, but I, was, I just didn't want these guys to think I couldn't do it. That's all I cared about. It is time for first and 10. First time you bombed on stage. Uh, I don't bomb. He doesn't believe in bombing. Brennan doesn't believe in bombing. Let's see what he says here. First couple of sets at the comedy store, I okay. bombed in the belly room in front of all my friends. Aww. Yeah, it's tough. That's the way it goes. First reality competition show you think you could win? Oh, man. Not Ninja Warrior. I'm way too big. I'm too big for that. Yes. Um, I could do well on those MTV yes. shows, like The Challenge and all that. Yeah, you could. Those are just kids from like, the real bananas. world. Yeah. I would do well on Oh, that. kids from the real world. If Banana hears this, he's going to be very mad. I don't know Bananas, but anyone named Bananas, <laughs> bring it. Bring it. <laughs> First embarrassing thing you did inside the octagon. I mean, getting knocked out is pretty embarrassing. First boxer you think of when I say overrated. i be a little careful with this, don't I? I'd say Anthony Joshua. Why? Because he won't fight Deontay? I'm hoping he hears this and he's like, what? He said that about me and then fights uh, uh, Wilder. Uh, I love the self-importance. Thinking that Anthony Joshua is going to move based on what Brendan Schaub says is fucking hilarious. Um, I, just, I just think looking at those, those three monsters in the heavyweight division, I, I think Joshua with, with a Wilder fear he's going to have a, a tougher time. To be fair, he was right though. As history would prove it, he was right in the end, right? A lot of people that know boxing always said Anthony Joshua wasn't that great anyway, but history has proven Brendan to be right. That's actually one of his good takes. And he said this four years ago when the hype over Anthony Joshua was still quite, you know, where it was. Because even in the UK, the hype around Anthony Joshua has kind of died down a bit. People have kind of seen the light, you know. He's maybe not as good as we thought he was. But, you know, he's still got a big heart. He's still willing to fight, you know, um, really good opponents for the most part um he's still his name is still in the ring and shit you know he still puts his, his hat in the ring you can't really hate on it in that regard i think he's gonna have a tough time but some of the speeches in the in the ring when he loses and stuff are so embarrassing first avengers character you'd like to be iron man i would pick him 
because uh, he's richer than all of them, and he oh. still kind of has some. He just has a suit. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's just a suit. He doesn't deal with the demons of like Spider Man and Hulk and the rest of the crazy ass cast. Yeah. He's just a rich dude. Okay. Who put together? He's like Elon Musk. Okay. He's Elon Musk. So you want to be? I want to be Elon Musk, dude. but Elon fight Musk. crime. Got it. That's that says a lot about his mentality, isn't it? He thinks if you're rich, you just don't have any problems. You won't have any issues. You don't have any demons when you have money. Money gets rid of demons. Okay. Um, also proves that he doesn't know the origin story of um, of I remember. But I'm not going to get into that because you know to get here. Well, anyway, but yeah, um, that was the interview. Um, obviously, you know, very interesting to see. Let's quickly look through some of the comments. What are people saying here on the comments? This is from four years ago. Let's see if any comments are here. He literally said in the video he only he's only saying that to stir Joshua to fight Fury. He called them all monsters. This is an obvious joke. How refreshing is it to see Brendan share a stage with someone and not interrupt them or cut them off? Good point. That makes sense that you're a tight end. She was shooting her shot and kind of and he kind of rolled his eyes. Um, I don't know. This person saw it as a flirt. Your brain has to be a little bit broken to read what she said there as a as her trying to get into Brendan's trousers. I saw that as her get basically negging him personally for me, but who knows? This one says, I'm a John to other fan, but I don't think Josh was overrated. My observation is that AJ was a, uh, it's heavyweight, and uh, damn, he this aged incredibly well. Despite not knowing likely anything about him, I find it truly hilarious how much of his, of his haters support him. One of the worst things you can do is someone is just ignore them. I don't want to hurt people. Yeah, great excuse for letting people use your face as a punching bag. I'm happy for these two. Each work a lot and it shows she has her own show. He has a special on Showtime. Nice. Okay, that's a good fan. The Colin Coward of comedy. How can you call an Olympic gold medalist holding four of the belts, fought more than 10 fighters, half his weight, um, or fights that Wilder has? Guess Brendan wasn't wrong about AJ being overrated. Gregory Brendan. That's why Wilder constantly ducking him. This video has aged her incredibly well. Da, 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 da. Okay, they're all giving him some nice hype. So he's getting some good comments on here. So big up Brendan for getting some nice comments for once. <laughs> 